So last week we did some portfolio reviews from developers off Reddit and a lot of people seem to like them and they keep coming in. So I'm gonna keep doing these every week. Uh, I couldn't exactly get to everyone last week because the video got pretty long. It was like half an hour long and I, I don't wanna be like skimming over people's portfolios. I actually wanna like, take the time to go through them. So there's a few more people from last week and this week that we're gonna do. I have three developers that we're gonna be looking over today and we're gonna get into those in just a minute. The cool thing about this week is one of the guys who sent his, res his portfolio in actually managed to land a junior developer job already. So I think you'll be able to see by the end of the video kind of what things he did right and what makes him stand out from all the other people who have sent in their stuff and like why he was able to use his portfolio to land a junior developer job. Full disclaimer on this video, just like last week, I'm not in charge of like hiring people. I don't work in HR or anything like that. I just have been able to, I guess, land some internships and some jobs like using my portfolio alone, like not using like my, my degree or anything like I didn't finish my degree or any other work experience. Like the portfolio is, is a really good tool to be able to land jobs and I've been able to do that. So like, this is just like kind of my opinion. Um, I've been working as a web developer for, for five years now and I kind of know how to like use these things to be able to like give people what they want to see to be able to break into the field. But I'm in no way like a hiring manager or anything like that. And the other big disclaimer is like, I'm not trying to be mean while I'm doing these, like trying to like rip you guys apart. Like thanks to everyone who sent them in so far. I'm honestly surprised so many people have, but I just kind of get in a flow when I'm like going over these and I'm like, oh yeah, he could do this. And there's this thing you could change. And oh, I know HR managers, like they really look for this thing. And I just want to like give you guys like as much as I can. You can sit here and you watch like a half an hour video of me reviewing these things. I'm hoping you can like step away and actually be able to take some of this stuff and go out and like make the changes to your portfolio and like take these things and apply them. I'm also thinking about doing resume reviews too. Um, I have like my resume that I would kind of base it off. A couple years ago, I did um, a resume like interview with a Google engineer and he kind of broke it down like exactly what they look for and how you should structure it. And I used that resume to land my first internship and get like a bunch of callbacks from like a bunch of places I was applying at the time. And I haven't really changed it too much. So I kind of used that as like the template for like how they do them. So I'm thinking about doing, yeah, resume reviews too. So. I'll, the email will be in the description. If you guys want to send in your resume or portfolio, just send them in there. Whenever I get like three or four of these, I'll probably just like, do the video that week on like portfolio or like resume reviews, just depending on how many people, how many people get in. But yeah, okay, without further ado, uh, let's dive into the portfolio reviews. Okay, first up we got Andrea. Okay, uh, you guys might know from the last video I did how I feel about pictures on your portfolio, I just think it doesn't do any favors. Like what if you're applying for like a senior role or something and they see like, they think you're too young. Also like you say right off the bat, December 2018, my first hackathon. You might've been coding for a long time before that, but if they say, oh, 2018, his first hackathon, he just started coding. He doesn't have five years of experience, only got two years of experience. So I'd probably just take that out, center your name here and just, just leave it at that. Okay, let's see what else you got. Scroll down to your work. It'd be nice if this was a scroll too. Just a little thing, not a huge deal. Um, one thing I noticed is that if you're up here, it snaps to your work. And then when you click on about and click on contact, nothing happens because they're in the same viewport here. So uh, it's just a little weird like UX thing. It makes it a little confusing. I click on contact, nothing happens, nothing changes. I would just maybe make these sections a little bit bigger, add some more padding here. So if I'm on work and this takes up my entire viewport, click on about, it'll scroll down to about. Same as when I click on contact, it'll scroll down to either the footer or some sort of like form or bigger section you put down here. Just clean that up a little bit. And then you have your resume that works. I'm not gonna pull that up on the screen, so I wanna show everyone. And let's take a look at your about section. A couple things here. I wouldn't say you prefer working with JavaScript. I would just like list the technologies you know, like TypeScript, Angular, whatever and just leave it at that because I think one of the biggest things you can do is be, I guess, language agnostic. So if you know, if you've been coding long enough, it doesn't really matter like what you're using, like if you know JavaScript or Python or if you're using Django or Node, like if you know how to code and you know these design patterns and how most of these frameworks work, you can pick one up and just like hit, hit the ground running. And if you apply for a job where, you know, what if they are like a total like Python Django shop and all you're saying is, you know, it's like JavaScript, I would just try and portray the message that you're a software developer, you know how to code, you know how to work with technology, and it doesn't really matter what that technology is, that you can just, you'll be able to pick it up and learn. And I, I know that some people do look for like, you to know a specific technology when you're applying for a job, but like, I mean, the last place that I worked at, there was a guy who had been coding Java for like his past like 10 years, and that's pretty much all he knew, but he got a job in a shop that used only Ruby on Rails, and he learned it in a few months, and he was off to the races, and now he's like, a senior engineer, or I think he's like one of the CTOs there, or something like that. I would take that out, personally. Okay, you have your Stack Overflow linked. I don't know how many people are really gonna take a look here. I've heard some people do. It looks like you do actually post quite a bit. And you've written some articles on here, that's good. Okay, you can see that right off the bat. 
I have no idea what a good score on Stack Overflow is. I literally just use it for Googling things at work when I don't know how to do something. But 265, it's better than zero, okay. Uh, yeah, I would leave this here. This is, it just shows you're active in the community. What I'm really interested in is your projects. I'm gonna hop in there. So, okay, so it looks like you contribute to a lot of open source. So that's, that's really good actually. So you have the projects uh, GitHub repository as well as your contribution so I can immediately see what you've contributed to it. That's really good. Let's take a peek at some of these. Cause some, they're not gonna spend that much time in here. They might take a look, just like a high level idea what you're doing. Uh, okay, if you're working with GraphQL, uh, oh, writing tests, that looks really good. That's awesome. Okay, so this is definitely something good to have. Just for someone to have the understanding that like you know how to work in a test or a development environment, you know how to write tests and test your code and contributing to something open source. So it's not just your own project. That's great. That, that's really awesome to have. Um, you don't see this on a lot of people's portfolio. It's just project that they've worked on. So it's really good. I love that you have the front end and the back end of the same uh, open source project that you've worked on so that you can work like, across all parts of the stack. Again, the repository and the contributions. I'm not sure exactly what this project is or if it's a bigger project. Okay, so I actually found the project that you're contributing to and this looks really cool. So it looks it's actually a pretty big project with a lot of people working on it. So the fact that you're contributing to this looks looks really good, man. Um, looks really, I think arguably better than having um, your own your own projects on here, unless it was obviously something that actually had users and you were like making money off or was living out there in the wild. I uh, got another contribution here to JavaScript tips and tidbits. Let's see what you've contributed. Okay, so contributing to the community again. Okay, so your whole portfolio just screams like I love to code. So that's that's really good. You can, you can definitely tell you spend a lot of time like giving back to open source and just learning. Um, I see you have this invoice application here. I would have liked to see like a live demo here instead of just the GitHub repository. Or you say here like uh, national competition that actually let me land second place. Like, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not saying it's not, but it's, there's no way to tell. This is another really good one, man. Like this, okay. So actually providing like a really solid README, like you have UML diagrams, you have screenshots of the application, um, all the features listed out, a whole like getting started. This is great. So like no one's probably actually going to download and run this. Like I highly, highly doubt, unless you're like a very small startup that is looking at you. And even then probably not, but just the fact that you went through and like have a very detailed README, this is, this looks awesome, man. And just having like UML diagrams, like showing that you actually know how to like structure software architecture, or maybe you have like a bit of a computer science or software engineering background. Um, that that's awesome. This is the way to do it. If you don't have a like live preview to show to somebody, and even if you do have a live preview to show to someone, this one, it just it's that it's that extra edge. Like not just you know how to like code something up and and, and throw it at the wall and, and get it online, but you actually there's some thought going into planning this thing. So if if you have a project that you're proud of and actually like, you know, does more than like a to-do app, like this is what you should be doing. So this is actually a really good example of a portfolio where you don't have like a lot of projects like online or like live, but you're doing a really good job of showcasing your skills. Like you have a very detailed readme, you're contributing to open source. Uh, this is another, this is a different approach than I took, but I think it's just as effective, if not more. Honestly, you also have a blog here. It was actually took me a little while to find this, um, just because it's not in the nav bar, and that's kind of what I was going off of. I'll probably chuck this up here to make it more apparent. Um, anyways, let's go take a peek. Oh, this is cool. You have a tagging system here. Um, that's really good. Okay, and you write about code a lot. It looks like some of these are outbound links, so you've actually like contributed to other blogs. That's awesome. Like you, you can tell you're very engaged in the community, and um, you spend a lot of time programming. I've said that a million times, but it's really good. And then the you also have your own blog set up here too. Uh, wow, this looks really nice. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what you're using for this, like if you're using Markdown or, or let's take a peek what you're using behind the scenes here. Gatsby, nice, okay. Uh, so yeah, I imagine you're using like Markdown or you've styled these yourself. That's what I usually do too. Um, this is this is really impressive. So this is one example of like everyone has a like a blog on their on their site and usually just like some plain text or something. But if you actually go like a little extra mile and like you come up with these like interactive components and like different way to like style your markdown. And like he has a few things here, like not on this post, but on, okay, this one right here. I looked for so long to find this because I saw it earlier when I was looking at portfolio, but just little things like this, like actually being able to interact with the content. It shows that you actually know what you're doing. And you're not just like rendering like some like 
little bit of like plain text or using like WordPress or something. And it's also very technical. Like, so if you're using this portfolio just to land a job, you wanna be showing them that you just, you know, you know what you're doing. You're not just talking about, you're not trying to get traffic, talking about anything to like your blog. You're talking about technical aspects. This is the way to go. Man, I feel like all I've done is like tell you how good a job you're doing or like give you feedback. I don't know how much this is helping you, but this uh, portfolio is great. There wasn't, there isn't too much that I would change like content wise and like with what you're actually like putting on here in terms of projects. The one thing I would like to see is maybe one like actually live hosted like full stack app where you can actually like click the URL, go to it and interact with it. Um, if you have time to like put together another side project, that's kind of the next thing you want to do. Um, the only other thing is just someone like the UI UX stuff. So like when you come on here, like not having your like blog, like very apparent from anywhere and just this whole like navigation situation where like nothing changes and then maybe just like throwing in like a scroll to or something. So it's like not so just like snappy little things like that. But other than that, um, I, I think it's great. And I think you just, yeah, just keep, keep doing what you're doing. Maybe you just clean it up a little bit when you have some time Think about putting a full stack application on here and getting like some be able to actually like interact with it in the browser and go visit it. But other than that, I think this is a really good example of what people should be striving for in terms of their project and contributing open source and um, having like actually having this sort of technical stuff in their blog and like going the extra mile to have it a little more, to have it a little more built out than just like rendering like plain text or something like that. So yeah, um, good job, Andrea. I'm sure you are going to be absolutely fine trying to find a job with this portfolio. Absolutely fine. Next up, we got Tony Bats. That beard is like next level. Like that's, that's what I'm trying to get to. Okay, let's take a peek here. Navigation looks good. Nav bar sticks to the top. I like that. Let's just take a look. You have a nice little scroll two going on here. That looks awesome. Okay, now let's actually see what you got content wise. Uh, always improving, fueled by coffee. A little obsessive, a little awkward. Okay, your personality comes across really well in this thing. You got like a really cool vibe and aesthetic going. Also, like I didn't really say anything about this uh, hero here, but this all looks really good. You can tell you know what you're doing on the front end. Just interested to see in what you built this in. And I, I don't think I'd be going too far to say you built this from scratch. It looks like you built this thing from scratch. I could be wrong. What if you did good for you? Not a lot of people do that anymore. <laughs> okay, I would probably not put it in something like this as if something is broken, try deleting your cache. Uh, there's an older version in your browser where it tends to break things. This just doesn't scream confidence in your ability as a developer. Uh, I know it's not like a huge thing, it's just your personal site. I would probably just, you know, take that out. Uh, my last little, I would definitely leave this stuff in. I think it makes your like personality come across a lot more, but I would probably clean up the grammar on some of this just a little bit and clean it up, make it a little more professional, like actually uh, formatting this kind of stuff correctly like this in here, um, just little things, but I would clean that up the slightest bit. Okay, skills, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, Git, WordPress, Photoshop, Apple, InDesign, PHP, Excel, Stack Overflow, Excel, okay. I would probably take this out because you're applying for a job as a software developer. Also, like, what is Apple as a skill? Like, do you mean like OS X, like a, as your operating system? Or I don't know what that is. I would take this and Excel out. I can see that you're definitely trying to market yourself as having some design chops too. Um, and you can tell from your site, like it looks pretty good. Um, so that's fine, just keep that in there. Stack Overflow, I don't know if this is like a joke, but I thought that was pretty funny. So I, I think most recruiters would too. So that's, I would leave that too, that's pretty funny. And let's take a peek. What we're always most interested in is your projects. Winter Advertising Agency. Okay, one like nitpicky thing, I would increase the spacing in between your text here because this is so like hard to read. It's like a wall of text. So like try like bullet listing this or at least like increasing this like line spacing or something because it's like really hard to read through. It looks like you have links to your live sites though. I'm not sure what this YouTube video is. My first, oh my God, you're making YouTube videos displaying your projects. Wow, that's different. Okay, that's cool. I like it. I think video is the easiest way to communicate with people, so I think you're onto something there. And you also have live site links, which is awesome. Okay, let's take a look at one of these things. This is your first one. People are gonna think it's the newest. It's the first one they're gonna look at, so this is what I'm gonna be judging most of it on. If this one is actually your best one, then I mean, you probably just put less projects on here so they see uh, your most impressive work, what you want them to see, not your whole, like everything you've made throughout your whole career. I go and put my first project on my portfolio because it was shit. Hey, this looks really good, man. I really like the aesthetic of this thing. You clearly know what you're doing uh, design-wise. 
interested to see what you built this in. Uh, we got a WordPress site. I don't know if you're applying for like a WordPress job or if you built this theme from this is the first one. Okay, so it doesn't look like you actually built this theme. It looks like you just put together a WordPress site. That's kind of what I get from here anyway. So I probably wouldn't have that on your, oh, I can see my recommended here, oh no. I probably wouldn't have that on your portfolio unless it's something you built from scratch. Like slapping together a WordPress theme isn't really what you want to put on your, on your resume if you're applying for a dev job. So I would probably try to find something else there. Uh, this one looks like you built from scratch. So we're gonna take a look at this. Okay, so you can really tell the difference between the site that you built from scratch and the WordPress site. Like, they're just night and day, like that last site and this one. I would take this WordPress site off, and this one, um, if you're, like, you say in your portfolio that you have all these, like, design skills and, like, all these technologies you use, this doesn't really say that to me. This looks really dated. Um, you do have some stuff going on here, like, you have, like, a cart that you can go and work with. Um, I'm just gonna see how well this thing actually works. Workflow here, sure, no add-ons. Okay, add to cart. Okay, so you do have like a full shopping cart workflow here, so I take it back. I would keep this on your portfolio. Um, I just I kind of expected it to look a little more modern with all the stuff you have on your portfolio design-wise. Ah, you fooled me, this isn't built from scratch. It's a WordPress site too. Okay, so I'm not sure if you're using a theme or if you just like kind of built the WordPress like theme yourself. If you built this WordPress theme yourself, this is really impressive. You have like a shopping cart in here and just that functionality alone is like good to show off. But I would make it very clear in here um, what exactly you did. When you say I built the site from scratch, and had it optimized, yada, 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 is that that you bought a WordPress theme and threw it together from scratch? Or like you built this WordPress theme from scratch and you're looking to find a job as like a PHP developer, like pumping out WordPress themes. So I make it very clear in here what exactly you're doing, uh, what exactly, like you, what kind of code you wrote to like make this project happen. Or if you're just like plunking WordPress themes together. Cause my first vibe when I see this portfolio, like so far is you're just a WordPress guy. Like you know how to like download a theme and like throw stuff together. Like I don't know how much coding you're actually doing. Uh, I'm just gonna, quickly pop through some of your other projects. I don't have time to look through all of them super thoroughly. I'm gonna guess this is another WordPress site. Looks like a personal project. Yeah, WordPress, there it is. So there are a few good things here. Like, it looks like you designed it. It looks like it's won some sort of awards. I'm, I don't really know how to verify that. I don't think anyone else is gonna be able to either. It got a lot of traffic. Like, yeah, these are all nice things. I don't really know if that's true or not. They're not gonna be able to know either. And let's take a look at your last two projects here. Okay, so I think the my biggest issue with this portfolio so far is it looks like you're just like a guy like throwing together WordPress sites. So I think if you were like pitching this to clients, it would be like an okay thing. You see like, oh, there's SEO and there's lots of traffic here and we're putting together like shopping carts, people can buy your products. Like if I'm a client, I'm here like, oh, these are all like good things I'll probably need for my small business. But if I'm an engineer looking to hire you, it's like, what did you do? Did you build this theme out? Are you like, what frameworks are you using? What languages are you using? Like what features did you actually implement yourself? And what just came like baked into the WordPress like backend of the plugins that you're using? So I'll make that very clear in here because I, I honestly don't know. I don't really know how to judge your skill set based on your portfolio. And that's the whole job of the portfolio. So I know exactly like what you can do and what they can, what they'll pay you to do. So you got an Instagram feed baked in here or something, I'm guessing. Ventures, okay, this is fine. Um, I don't, it's not like super relevant, but I mean, if you want to, I, I don't think it's like that necessary, especially if you're like looking to like have an employer or like a, HR person looking at this. I mean, it's okay. I'm not gonna tell you to get rid of it. And then contact page, this is good. I like having a dedicated contact form. Just makes it nice and easy for people to get a hold of you. Uh, scroll to top. One thing that I will definitely, um, that I love about this guy's site, he has like these little Easter eggs hidden everywhere. Like if you go down here and like <laughs> click on this guy, you have like a Naruto like booking across the screen. <laughs> and there's also, I think there's like a Pokemon that comes out here somewhere. Ah, there we go. <laughs> a bomb appeared, that's funny. The little things like that, like they seem kind of dumb, but at some point there's gonna be another like, another techie like looking at this. Like it might be an HR person first, but eventually they're gonna give it to uh, whoever's gonna be like interviewing you or one of the more senior guys and they're gonna quickly look through your portfolio. And like little stuff like this can be enough for them to like kind of connect with you and be like, oh, like this is like someone I get along with, someone I think is funny, I'll bring them in and talk to them.
Form spree, classic. Okay. I would have liked to see like something else going on there just because I didn't really see like much like other like programming jobs being flexed here. Like it's all just like kind of like built in stuff like WordPress, but Form spree is fine. Form spree is nice and easy. Okay, so I really like the look of your site. Um, the Easter eggs is like really cool. The navigation is all good, but you're definitely going to need some bigger projects in here. So like, this is all just like WordPress stuff. I, I need to see you either making it clear exactly what you did with these projects. Um, like if you actually like built the themes from scratch, if you integrated certain features from scratch, like yourself, or some sort of other project that doesn't involve WordPress. You know, PHP and like JavaScript and like so there's no reason why you couldn't like build some sort of like full stack application yourself and like try and get it hosted. Um, I would like to see something that incorporates some more of these skills uh, in your projects. Like, and I would, you already have like a bunch of stuff in here. It looks like you've actually been paid to do like the job you have now, which mostly does WordPress. So just like take the time to build like one personal project, like a few months, and then try and get something like really impressive and put it like boom, like front and center here. And then maybe try and narrow down these projects as well. Cause right now you have like four or five, six of these things. They're only gonna look at like maybe like two or three of them. Like I went through and looked at all of them cause I don't know, I got time, I guess. But I think most people are only gonna look at like one or two if they're looking at your portfolio. So I would leave that front and center and then whatever, maybe whatever WordPress site you think is most impressive that you actually did the most coding for. Uh, make it really clear what you did, leave it up there and put a new project on there. And then I, I think you're gonna be in good shape. Like your portfolio is nice, but it's hard for me to judge. So I honestly don't know like where your skill set is, like what you can actually do like based on that portfolio. So definitely make that message a lot clearer. And then if you do have these skills here that you claim to have, I think you're going to be in good shape. So thanks for sending that in, Tony. It looks really good. Okay, next up we have Ben and Ben is a web developer focusing on JavaScript, Python, and Java development, big data, and general software engineering practices. 11 year veteran of the US Army. Wow, that is really cool. 11 year veteran turned software developer. That's awesome, man. Okay, skills, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, React.js, SAS, Gatsby JS. I love when people use Gatsby. Gatsby is awesome. Figma, Adobe, Inkscape, and Blender. Wow, so you're really front end focused here. You have a lot of design stuff going on, okay. Back in development too, okay. Node.js, Express, Python, Flash, GraphQL, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Java, Git. Well, Java is more of like a backend language. I'll probably put that up there. Um, Git, Linux, Apache, Nginx. Holy shit, this just keeps going. Data analysis, Pandas, Jupyter, MATLAB. Are you an 11 year vet in the military or 11 year vet in software engineering? Cause I don't know how you would know all these technologies well enough to put on your portfolio if you haven't been coding for a long, long time. I've been coding for five years and I code every day. I, I love it. And like, sure, I know like I mean, all this stuff I could probably put on here. Like I know all this stuff very well. I do not know any of this. I would not put that on there, but like Node, yeah, I'd put that on there, Express. But some of this stuff like I've used a little bit, but I would not feel comfortable putting on my portfolio. Like Nginx, I messed around with it and used it for my own personal projects, but I would not put this as being able to use it in a professional setting. Same with AWS. Like. I'm not a DevOps guy. I don't know if you are, but I would just be careful there because you're listing a lot of technology here and anything you put on here is fair game. In like an interview, like if they are bringing you on it like, and they see this here, they're gonna think you are like, you are comfortable using it in a professional setting. So I don't know how much experience you have. Maybe you've been coding for like 10 years. I don't know why you're sending your portfolio to me if you are, but I'd be careful about listing all this because it's different and like I open this up like one or two times as like a hobby, like like a little like side project, but it's different if you're actually saying like I'm comfortable enough to use this in a professional setting. Okay, sorry, rant over. Uh, let's take a look at your well, contact blog projects art. So um, art's got me very intrigued. So I'm gonna look here first instead of the projects. Hmm, okay. So I don't really know what you're applying, like what kind of, um, what kind of recruiter you're trying to attract here. Are you looking for like a full stack job, a front end, a back end job? Or are you looking to be like a, a UI UX designer or something? Cause I don't really know how this is all like relevant um, if you're applying for a job, but I mean, I guess like it, it shows your personality a little bit, sure. Wow, you could really work on the UI UX for this page. I don't know exactly what's going on here. These ones that don't even look like you can actually click on. Okay, don't really know what's going on with this page. I would probably just take this out. I uh, don't really know how it's relevant. Okay, let's go to your blog. We're gonna react, introduction design. Uh, okay, so you got a few things going on here. Just kind of documenting what you're learning. Oh, that's all stuff that you've actually like contributed to dev. That's cool. 
Uh, little trick, if you wanna keep people on your site, uh, change the target to, I believe it's target underscore blank. And then it'll open up this link in a new tab, not the current tab. I don't really know what these hearts are. It looks like you've like tried to incorporate like liking or something into your blog, but I can't figure out actually how to do it. Oh, this is pulling from the dev. It looks like one of the dev API. If I go back here and inspect this, you go to your network tab, reload this. Hmm. Not exactly sure where these are coming from. If you are pulling them in from an API, that'd be cool to list that. Okay, let's get to the important part of your projects. Healthy Living Business Site, GatsbyJS, Drupal CMS, YouTube API, Auth.O. So you got a lot of stuff going on there. Dungeons and Dragons GraphQL API, that's cool. Python scripts, create SQL database, MongoDB instance, GraphQL schema. A whole jam stack going here, React, Netlify, function. Yeah, that's that's really good. A lot of people are looking for that right now. I would probably move this like a little further up, actually. Actually, let me, let me take that back. Let me look at this first. Healthy Living Business website. Okay, so uh, before I even like trying to understand what's going on here technically, you have on your portfolio like all these different like design technologies and you say that you're like UI UX designer. This site looks really dated. Like it looks like something from the like 90s. If you're gonna put this like the number one thing on your portfolio and you're saying that you're a, you have UI UX chops, um, I would I, I would clean this up. But let's actually look at like what's going on here technically. So they have a blog. Um, and I'm guessing, it says you built this with Gatsby, so it's not like this is just like WordPress. You're actually coding this, so that's good. Video, not a lot of content though. Um, so it'd be cool to see like some infinite uh, infinite scroll or like pagination or something. This just links off to some other website that is, again, with the, the target blank for the new window. It'd be nice to have that there. And this just looks like some sort of like Zoom plugin, like like you just like kind of like an iframe, like you popped in here, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's a Zoom iframe, so. Nothing like super impressive here. Um, I don't know if I would have that as my first project. You didn't plan auth out. That's good. But it's like hidden like way up here. No one's actually gonna like go through this workflow. So I think about um, yeah, either presenting this a little different or moving it further down your project, project page. Projects. You just have the code for this guy. Open like Okay, so you have to, I would include a little more information in your README. So like in one of the, um, I think the first portfolio reviewed today, you had a really, really um, well thought out README. And try and include something like that because all this tells me is like, this is a, this is a work in progress API. And like, I'm not gonna go through all these steps to like actually do this and see what you've got going on. I'm gonna be like very like on first glance. I would, if you're not gonna have a live link, um, and I'm not actually gonna be able to like interact with it. Um, I would include a very well thought out readme. Brew numbers API. Use with data conversion associated with their brewing projects. What the heck is this? It's not secure. It doesn't have a domain name. It's literally just living on the IP address. It <laughs> not looking great. Okay, what does this thing do? Okay, so my biggest thing with this one is what did you build this with? Like, what did you actually do? Um, I would list that like right here because I can dive into the code and go find out myself. But like on first glance, like I don't really know. So it looks like, wait, Dungeons and Dragons, what the hell? Okay, so that one isn't even linked. You have the wrong one. Yeah, okay, so that's the wrong link. That's broken. So I have no idea what this project what, what you used to build this project, what you actually did. And I can't access the code. And the live site is a little rough. So I'm not too sure how I feel about having this one here. Let's move on to this uh, Jamstack site because I'm really pumped to see this one. Just gotta go back and open this in a new tab because I don't want to get lost. Uh, yeah, this is, again, dated. So if you're going to have all these things here, Figma, Photoshop, Inkscape, if you're gonna have all these things um, I'm listed here. I would definitely think about you know presenting these a little better because again these look like they're out of like the 90s. It's not the best UI. Um, there is some like functionality built in here, like being able to add like things to a shopping cart. That's like, that's great. Um, that's like a very common workflow to have. Um, oh, it's not even a shopping cart actually. It's just like you, it sends in like an email form. Yeah, I think you're going in the right direction with this one, but I would make the, clean this up a lot. Think about um, incorporating like the Shopify API or like Cart.js or something. I think it's Cart.js or uh, what is it? 
Snip card, that's it. Okay, so yeah, I think about using like Snip card or Shopify and incorporating that. So it, I can, like, I can already tell, like I've worked with like Jamstack sites a lot. You're probably just like sending off like a form saying like, oh, cinnamon bun brownie cupcakes. Someone would actually have to like, go into their email and like, like decipher that and like make the order themselves. It wouldn't be like totally automated, like a, like a Shopify or a Snip card thing. So I think about doing, this is going in the right direction. Um, I would think about using some sort of like third party library to get this whole shopping cart situation figured out. And then just, yeah, just cleaning this up, making it look more modern. Like there's no reason why you can't take the time to just make this look like a modern, you know, like 2020 like website. But I think your uh, technology stack for this one is like going in, in the right direction, especially if you're looking for a front end role. Twitter security consultants, pamphlet page for local business using Gatsby. Okay, live site, but oh, wait, <sighs> again, do this, again. It just looks really dated, man. So I would, I would just take the time to like work on your CSS skills a little bit more. Um, uh, it looks like you're using SAS as well, and just try and even if you don't like come up with the design yourself, like just find like a cool template or something that looks modern. There's like copy like bits and pieces of other people's site, and then just like you know, code it up yourself and make it like present it a little more nicely. Um, I think would do you all kinds of favors because like your technology stack I think is on point like you're you're checking all the boxes but it's just uh, fine-tuning some of these projects and really presenting them in the best way possible like showcase your skills the best way you can Jerome says API express API to book fun of a friend oh this is live that's cool I'm gonna guess this is on Heroku I think it's spinning up so I'm going to open this in a new tab and come back to it because I'm running out of time. PNG to MP3, designed to convert a directory of images to MP3 files by way of test drivers sharing Google Text Speech API. Wow, that sounds really impressive. Okay, let's take a look at the code. Okay, this is a cool little project. It would be cool to see this in action though, to see it like hosted somewhere and you actually be able to like, you know, drag and drop a file in and then it spit out and you'd be able to download. Because yeah, the one thing about having just uh, your GitHub linked is no one's actually really gonna like look through the code or spend too much time doing it. It has to be very high level. Like so people are gonna spend like, you know, a minute on this page at most. So it'd be cool to see this like hosted somewhere or just um, a little more like effort put into the readme of just like how exactly you went about doing it. But it's, it's a nice little project. I don't think there's anything wrong with that one. Uh, it looks like your, <laughs> your Jerome says API isn't, isn't spinning up, so might want to take that one off there, figure out what's going on there. That's the other thing about having too many projects in your portfolio page. If there's like bugs or like you're not maintaining all of them, then you can run into trouble with people having broken links. That's why I always say like keep it to a few projects, a few really good ones. It doesn't have to be a million of them. Uh, see a lot of downloads, sun, moon, data, United States, Naval Observatory page. Okay, same thing as the other one. It's just no one's really gonna go like looting through this code. So if you had this hosted or something, that would be nice. And lastly, uh, I haven't looked at your contact page yet. Let's talk. Okay, so nothing, nothing crazy. Okay, Ben, uh, I would say you're on the right track, but I think you're going to, it looks like you're going too broad. Your skill sets are like all over the place here. All of these front end technologies, which is like one of these is someone's job on its own. And then like your design stuff here, like you're showcasing your art up here. Uh, you have all of these backend technologies that are like all over the place. And then as well as yeah, database, general. Unless you have like 10 years of experience or 20 years of like experience, I'm not gonna believe that you're good. You're, you can do all these professionally. Like I just don't buy it. So I would try and narrow this down and pick like a couple of these technologies and then list them on my portfolio. Like I, build full stack applications and I market myself as a full stack developer. And I've used Nginx just to get like my server up and get some like very like basic configuration set up. But I don't put Nginx on my resume. Like I am not a DevOps guy. Like I cannot professionalize in Nginx. Like I, I can professionalize in like writing back in code and Node.js and Express, but I wouldn't put like AWS on my resume just because I don't do it professionally. So I just figure out exactly like what technologies you want to learn, like what you need to land like the job in whatever city you're in and then really like hone down on those and then showcase it in your in your portfolio. So if we go over to your projects and you have like two, four, six, like eight projects here, like again, just like narrow this down to like two to four and make it your best work. So like you're on the right track with all of these, but I wish you had just done one 
and had like a modern, like amazing looking UI. It looked like something that was like, like top line, like that could be passed for like this year. And then like you had like a full workflow, like working with like the Shopify API, like checking out stuff. And then you had it like, you know, using the Jamstack, you had like the whole like Mailgun integration, like sending off, like subscribing for like a blog or something like that. And then like really seeing like how you would like get that workflow down for a client instead of um, just all these like little like bits and pieces. Like all of these have pieces that I like, but throwing them all together, I think is what's gonna like, is really gonna stand out for you if you're um, trying to get an employer to look at this. And then just listening to the technologies you use for each one of these would be nice. Um, I, like I have no idea like what exactly you use for like your brew API or like a couple of these. I think you're on the right track with this one here the uh, Jamstack stuff. But uh, I think you're going like in the right direction. I can tell you like code a lot. You like to code, which is always like the first step, like first thing you want to show. But I think narrowing down your skill set and being more selective about the projects you pick and then showcasing them in the right light. And then I think you will be, uh, you will be on your way. You'll be in, you'll be in really good, you'll be in really good shape. So uh, thanks for sending that one in Ben and good luck. Okay, so you guys might be able to tell while I was doing the reviews just by like my reaction to it, but the first guy who sent his portfolio review in, he was able to use that to actually land a junior developer job, and he's actually working as a software engineer right now. And I think the biggest takeaway from that, just kind of look at some of the things that he did right, like he contributed a lot of open source, so that was a big one. He had uh, the front end uh, and back end projects on his, on his work page, so you could kind of see that you can like bounce around the stack. If you're going for a startup, they want to be wearing like as many hats as possible, so that's a good one to look for. He also kind of went above and beyond for a few of the aspects on his actual like portfolio site. Like his blog was a little more built out than most of the blogs you kind of see. Like he had like tagging and there was like a lot of technical stuff going on in there. And like there were some cool things he was doing. It looked like with like uh, like MDX files or something like that. He had like some cool uh, features built into like his blog pages. It wasn't just like spitting out like, static like uh, plain text or something. But my biggest feedback to everyone who sent them in, and honestly everyone who sent them in so far, is just that to have that like one or two uh, port like portfolio projects that really stand out and kind of show off like all of the skills that you're that you're trying to communicate. So instead of having like six or like eight projects even, that are like they each do like one little thing, and some of them like when you first started coding, they're like maybe not, you're not the most proud of. Take like one, two, like maybe three and just have those listed there and don't show them anything else. They don't need to see anything else or I don't have time to look at anything else. Like you just want to communicate with them that you can do the work they're paying you to do and you just, if you can do that in like one or two projects, then beautiful, you don't need to do anything else. But yeah, thanks everyone for sending them in. Uh, if I get more portfolios or resumes to review, I will put out another video next week. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.